Here we got a Honda GX124 horsepower engine. I picked this up to use as a project. Now we got to get it running first. And yesterday I had it running by dumping fuel in, so we got to figure out why fuel is not going from the carburetor bowl inside the engine. Now the first thing we've got to do to troubleshoot, there's a few things you need to know to make the engine run, which is the obvious. You need fuel, air, ignition. You need to confirm what we got sparks. So I'm going to pull the spark plug cable off you can saw. We're going to pull this plug out and we're going to test it. I got the spark plug out and it's still wet from yesterday's troubleshooting. So what we're going to do to test for spark is we're just going to rest it against any part of the body, any metal part of the body where I can get a ground where I could spark. So I'm going to hook up the drift camera and hopefully we can get a view. Now when I crank this over, you should be able to see a spark in there. You see that? So we know we have ignition. While we have the spark plug, it's a good time to do a compression test now. I don't have the exact figures, but it should be about 100 PSI from a quick Google search. Ah, looks like compression's right around the 90 mark. Our compression test came back about 90 PSI as you saw in the video. That's a little on the low side. I'm gonna to have to get the exact numbers to confirm. However, at 90 PSI, it should still run. Now we got spark, we got compression. Some people may say that, you know, you should do it on a warm engine and you should, I don't think it's gonna affect regions 10 PSI. And somebody might chime in and say, oh, you're supposed to have the throttle open. But on this engine, the throttle is stuck open full time. So now we gotta confirm air and also a dirty air filter will also affect your compression as well but I already know the air filter is not the problem because you can see right here the air filter is still in pretty decent condition now on the carburetor float bowl this bottom one holds your float on and this is like a drain right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open the drain we're going to drain some fuel out we're going to verify that indeed there is gasoline in there. Whoops. As I'm making a mess, and I open up the flow from the carburetor. That's coming from the tank. So we know we're getting flow. I'm going to put this back in. And then we're going to set this gas aside because we're going to use it in a bit. So now I'm going to loosen the bottom. I know it's kind of hard to see. I'll try to get my fingers out of the way. Pull this float out. The bottom of the float bowl is pretty clean. I was expecting it to be all covered with gum and varnish. And the float still seems to move freely. And the needle still seems to move in and out. So I got everything back together now and I'm going to try to start this thing and you're going to see it will not stay running. Do that again. So we verified we got spark, we got combustion, but somehow we don't have fuel delivery unless we manually put it in. That's an obvious sign that something in the carburetor is probably crystallized or gummed up, varnished, whatever, from sitting for an extended period of time. So now I'm going to remove the carburetor. I got some sea foam. Maybe we're going to soak in some sea foam for a while, see what happens. But Let's strip it down and see what we can get out of this. Carburetor pulled off. I have some hose pinchers right here that are going to pinch that line off. I believe you only have to do is remove these two nuts on the side and then the whole assembly should just come out. Um, there is something attached to the top so I think we're going to have to remove this plastic piece first, remove this piece up top, disconnect the throttle and then pull it out. So I'm going to start removing this one. 
this one and this one and hopefully I can get this top plate off. I just drained all the gas out of the float bowl again. Make sure your switch is set to the off position. Now we're ready to remove these two screws and as we very carefully slide it off, we will be able to get that throttle linkage out of there. So let's get started on that. I think that should be number 10 mil as well. Yeah, number 10. Now we got this black rubber hose. Just slide that off. And then you gotta put this kind of in the middle position. And this should just slide right off like that. So you can see right here, this is the choke. And you can see inside there. And this back one's your throttle. I don't know if you can see it operating in there. I'll see if I could. So now we need to pull this off. Doesn't look too bad inside there yet. Ah, oh, there we go. Got that off. So you can see, I can't get this off till we get the gas line out. So we're going to use this pincher. Hose pinch it. Hopefully that'll be oh, my enough. My hose pinchers. Hopefully that'll be enough to trap the fuel. I guess there's one way to find out. I already tightened it. Never mind. I'm going to remove that little clip and pull the fuel line off. Got the fuel line off. The hose pincher's working, but I'm going to use a secondary one just to crimp the end, just to make double sure that we're not going to come out to the garage tomorrow and be gasoline all over the place. Now this carburetor should just come right off. Yep, sure does. Right, let's just pull this pilot out. Well, I got this thing soaking in sea foam. And I had it soaking for a while, but I'm pretty sure I've already found the problem. Let me just dig it out here. I called this like a pilot jet or pilot. I believe it's just a pilot. Let me just clean that off and then I will show you. Okay, let's just take this in the light here. Now besides for the glare, can you see that hole in the center? That was all plugged up before. So by soaking it in sea foam, loosened it up, I used some compressed air right there, used my blow nozzle, blew it out. I also blew inside here, make sure nothing else was plugged up. I think we're good to go. Sea foam is fixed today again. I'm willing to bet money on it. So let's reassemble this carburetor. And then I guarantee you, this thing will fire up. All because some gum and varnish and who knows what else plugged this pilot up. I think I called it a pilot jet before. I don't know what the proper term is. Pilot, pilot jet. Somebody will correct me. Or maybe I'm wrong altogether. It's been a long time since I had a carburetor part. It's probably been like 12 years. Carburetors are old school. I don't really like them. But anyways, let's get this thing assembled. I just got the fuel line put on. And I got the throttle. The spring was off the last time. So I got the spring on there now. We're just going to finish assembling this. And then fire this bad boy up. Did I fix it or is it a fail? We are about to find out. Yeah, I'm going to end the series right there in this video, GX120. We verified it. We got the engine to run. We still got some problems, low compression. And now, before I had a no fuel issue, but now I have an overfueling issue. So that's something I'm going to have to look into. I don't believe there's any adjustments you can do to that float. I didn't see any mixture screws. Uh, maybe the pilot is just worn out and allowing too much fuel through. Anyways, that's something I'm going to have to look into investigate further and we're gonna tackle this in other videos anyways i'm gonna get going if you guys have any questions or comments post them below otherwise thanks for watching